the general manager of KRON TV San Francisco, Mr. Harold P. C. The film which you are about to witness is one of the many non-entertainment public service programs produced in color by KRON TV, Channel 4, San Francisco. The rights to this film specifically prohibit its use for broadcast without the express permission of KRON TV. The management of KRON TV hopes you will derive some benefit from this presentation and we solicit your comments. One half of all the prescriptions written in this country are for drugs that affect the mind. So says Dr. John Griffith of Vanderbilt University. And the workbench of any pharmacist would confirm his statement. The New York Times said recently that for all but a few Americans, life can't be lived without drugs. Yet as Dr. Frank Fremont Smith of the New York Academy of Sciences has pointed out, a powerful pharmaceutical agent, if used unwisely, is dangerous especially if its site of action is the brain. Recently, the California legislature acted swiftly to outlaw one particular mind-changing drug, lysergic acid diethylamide, better known as LSD. This is Assignment 4, the weekly award-winning Report to the West, produced in the community interest by the documentary department of KRON-TV. Tonight, Danger LSD, the story of society's effort to halt the sale and use of a powerful new drug. Well, I feel for me it has brought me to a deeper awareness of myself and my relationships in my life that are important to me. And my whole uh, feeling is that I am more conscious and thereby more effective in my life. This Bay Area housewife has taken a trip that is used LSD more than 15 times. LSD is also sometimes known simply as acid. The trips it provides can be pleasurable or disturbing, but this user does not like the term bad trips. I would be more inclined to call it a difficult trip, and that can be... Uh, actually the most meaningful kind to have as uh, I would find that in one's personal life without the use of a psychedelic sometimes the most um, difficult experiences in your life can if you confront and meet them and deal with them you come out of it a better human being Dr. William Lammers, a child psychiatrist in Kentfield, has treated several youngsters who have had bad reactions from LSD. One of the um, earliest uh, and most frequent problems is uh, frightening hallucinations. Another one is the recurrence of the symptoms of LSD intoxication even weeks and months after you took your last dose of the drug. The third and perhaps most serious variety of unfavorable reaction is the development of uh, an acute or even permanent psychotic state. Dr. Joel Fort is director of the Center for Special Problems in San Francisco, which helps people with personality disorders. Finding happiness. So I think we are a drug-ridden society, and it's in this context that we would need to look at the use or abuse of any particular drug, such as LSD. A mind-altering drug is simply a, a drug that alters consciousness or thinking or the emotional state in some way. And this would include alcohol, the most extensively used mind-altering drug, sedatives, stimulants, narcotics, marijuana, a variety of other substances. People have used gasoline or glue fumes. Uh, they've used a variety of uh, plant seeds and other substances and including LSD. LSD is different from the others in that its effects are more profound, more pervasive, uh, and its effects are brought about by a much more minute dose than the other mind-altering drugs. It's especially disturbing to see teenagers taking LSD for thrills. It's extremely dangerous. It's a, it, it, they're taking a risk uh, that could change their whole life in a very negative way. This drug is no plaything. Uh, I know of examples from outside of my practice that are, that are better demonstrations of the seriousness of this drug. Uh, there's an example from Los Angeles of a man who 
walked out on the freeway and was going to merge or mold himself into the oncoming traffic and was struck dead by an oncoming car. There was an example in Berkeley of someone who uh, was going to try and fly out of a second story window and killed himself. Frightening LSD hallucinations are sometimes called freaking out, yet the idea of a journey into the mind has persuaded many people to try an LSD trip. There is a, uh, an acuteness of, uh, of your whole uh, development of your whole uh, sensory level. You, you have an intensity of experience. Um, the uh, colors will be far more dramatic and uh, often in uh, hallucinatory experiences there will be uh, uh, a sense of movement of things that would ordinarily appear as, as being stationary and these will be very uh, lovely to watch and uh, sometimes uh, your sense of uh, touch or your uh, sense of smell will be uh, heightened to the point where um, the most simple things have a delightful kind of experience for you on that level. Others have said, my body is no longer my own. I feel it melting away. Time has no meaning. Time is standing still. Sometimes the visions are beautiful, like being born again. Sometimes ugly. I keep seeing the corpses of friends, my own death. The reactions, endlessly varied, are in response to a microscopic amount of this powerful chemical. To some, LSD is the instrument of a new religion. The high priest or guru of this religion is Dr. Timothy Leary, who left Harvard University after the school objected to his experiments with the drug. not starting a religion to legalize and cover our activities. It's been well known to the American people and to the world for the last six years. We've been using marijuana and LSD for serious spiritual purposes. That's no secret. Well, I know that Dr. Leary has spoken about the fact that ministers and rabbis have also used the consciousness expanding drugs and have had favorable experiences. And I certainly would admit that this is possible. Uh, However, in these kind of visionary experiences, the uh, way may be sought for solutions to life's problems, life's questions, in a simple and easy manner. The life Lutheran pastor in Berkeley, Sigurd Locken, feels Dr. Leary is missing the point of religion. Hard, and religion again, is not a means of escaping from a cold, cruel world into a private world of comfort and integrity, but it is a means of finding integrity in social relationships and in community right here. If Timothy Leary is the high priest of LSD, two of its apostles might be Ron and Jay Thielen, who run the psychedelic shop in San Francisco's Haight Ashbury We've district. We've never had this experience before. There's no tradition or no history in our country of a real spiritual kind of life. And we're just, we're, we're, we're confused right now. We're trying to find out what it means to, to have a spiritual, wholesome life and still be able to function daily, but still be able to live. Uh, one thing it does mean is that the symbols, the symbols that our parents and the, the older generation that you speak about, the symbols that they live with, that they manipulate, are no longer meaningful, are no longer useful. It is an, an illusion that any of these drugs, and I think this also includes alcohol and the more socially acceptable mind-altering drugs, it would be an illusion to think that they really solve the problem. At best, they serve as a temporary escape, and uh, at worst, they obscure the real problems and allow them to become much worse rather than doing anything towards solving them. When people talk about having bad trips, about uh, this doing uh, brain damage, being harmful, those people are setting up the bad trips they're talking about. If one goes into this experience thinking that it can be bad, uh, then there's a chance it'll be bad. The whole problem is that uh, legislators and doctors 
and psychiatrists and physicians have been pounding away at how dangerous this is because they have never had the joyous experience. Once you've had the joyous experience, uh, then you don't talk about the dangers and it going bad because that's all based on fear. And it's getting out, getting over fear, getting out of fear that, that uh, this whole community is all about. If it's a setting where they experience anxiety or it's conducive to anxiety, if, for example, they're taking it under illegal circumstances or they're taking an unknown dose or there's nobody around that they can trust in or nobody that's experienced in its use, they're much more likely to have a bad trip or bad experience than if they're properly prepared, they're mature people, they know the dose they're taking, it's a pure substance, and there's an experienced person available to help them achieve beneficial effects. So the setting is perhaps more important with LSD, but it also influences the reaction of any of these drugs. But most of all, it's the underlying personality state or character structure of the person taking a mind-altering drug that determines its ultimate effect. Because of its unique properties, LSD did not simply assume its place on the drugstore shelves. These mind-changing properties have been known since 1943. But only lately did LSD become the banner of a much publicized underground or subculture of our society. This world of late adolescence and post-adolescence is a post-war phenomenon centered in America but reaching out to Europe and Japan as well. With more than half the world under the age of 25, it constitutes a powerful force. It brought into use the term generational gap because it's a world that people over 40, especially parents, find it almost impossible to understand. These youngsters were never poor. They're better educated than the generation that preceded them, and they take our rapidly advancing technology for granted. The bad, the possibility of nuclear war, and the good, where machines do most of the work. John D. Black, director of the Stanford Counseling and Testing Center, quotes a girl student as saying, I tell my mother how miserable I am at school, but she tells all her friends I'm having a ball. Well, this lack of communication is widespread, with the age of 30 often regarded as the dividing line. Under that line, the words and music of popular songs, the haircuts, the clothes, dances, are almost totally alien to the older generation. I think it's a worldwide revolutionary thing. I think young people all over the world are uh, aware that uh, uh, we have to change. Everybody has to change. And I think this is indicated in uh, cities like Amsterdam, where the young people have, a, have won a seat on the city council, the provost. It's indicated by the, the growth of the underground press in this country. There's uh, the East Village Other out of New York, the LA Free Press. Uh, the paper out of East Lansing, Michigan, uh, the Oracle here in Haight-Ashbury. Uh, there's a whole underground press net network uh, building up in, within the country. And uh, every major city in the country has a, has a community. If there was a magic drug, as some of the proponents of LSD say, that would turn an ordinary, average uh, person into a brilliant, creative genius, fully functioning and fully satisfied and fully happy, then certainly many more people uh, would recommend such a drug and probably be taking it themselves. Unfortunately, LSD does not work that way, and part of the reason why it doesn't is that what I mentioned before, that none of these drugs in themselves bring about the effects we talk about. It's a complex interaction with the underlying personality and intellectual level of the person taking them. <laughs> The most far out fringe of this underground has come to be called the psychedelic scene. The word, based on the Greek word delos, meaning manifest, was invented by Dr. Humphrey Osmond to mean mind manifesting or mind revealing. In this world, lights and sounds and colors seem to have a new meaning or emphasis, roughly similar to that experienced after taking LSD. The term psychedelic was taken up by the mass media, newspapers, magazines, TV, and advertising and it became part of the language. Even the New York Times began using such phrases as turned on or taking a trip. In this atmosphere, LSD, even though illegal, was used by more and more young people, often by unstable youngsters whose hang-ups almost guaranteed them bad trips because they were taking the drug in an unsupervised setting. 
Physicians, lawmakers, and parents expressed concern. And California Attorney General Thomas Lynch held several meetings to point up the dangers of indiscriminate use of powerful drugs. Attorney General Lynch acknowledges that the use of LSD is increasing despite the new law against it. We know from past experience that the mere passage of a law in, in and of itself is not going to cure a problem. It will reach the people who are trying to make a profit from a drug such as this. Candor makes me say that there is a tremendous profit in it, just like there is in other illicit drugs. I have before me some uh, capsules of LSD. Each one of those is worth $5, and there are a thousand of them here in front of me. The uh, pure LSD, which was produced by Sandoz Pharmaceutical Company, and uh, which is no longer available, uh, gave fairly uh, clean LSD-type effect. Now the uh, substances that are available uh, and are called LSD uh, apparently contain some impurities. They're giving people some unfavorable reactions. We've seen a number of these recently, uh, and I know of many others throughout the Bay Area, of people who take LSD capsules and then experience reactions which are very distressing to them. I think it is true that the American people have become increasingly conditioned to taking drugs of various kinds both because of the uh, remarkable developments in, uh, in uh, medical care involving drugs and because of the extensive advertising of these products so that people have now learned through advertising and through uh, many articles in the magazines and newspapers that whenever they have a pain, a problem, some form of tension or unhappiness, if they just take a pill of some kind or drink alcohol, all of these things will disappear. Alcoholic beverages, which we are inclined not to think of as addictive drugs, are a $12 billion a year industry in this country. The nation's attempt to prohibit their use was called the Great Experiment. It failed. Instead, the problem has increased year by year. We now have an estimated four to six million alcoholics in America, some 15,000 traffic deaths, and 200,000 injuries every year are blamed on drunk driving. 60% of all arrests are connected to alcohol. Cirrhosis caused by alcohol is a major cause of death. Likewise with tobacco, widely used but dangerous. Smoking causes thousands of deaths every year from lung cancer. Marijuana, according to the testimony of students, now is widely used on nearly every college campus and even around some high schools. Sedatives, tranquilizers, and other mind-altering drugs dispensed on prescription are a half-billion-dollar-a-year business. It is in this drug-taking atmosphere that an even more powerful chemical agent, LSD, came into use, with the long-range effects still to be determined. With no way for anyone to buy or use LSD legally and under proper controls, the risks involved in taking the drug radically increased. Yet in the proper hands, LSD can be useful. In terms of treatment, it's been useful in treating alcoholism and in treating various forms of uh, neurosis or behavior problems. It's been useful as a research technique in understanding brain functioning and mind functioning somewhat better than we did before. It's now been used in the treatment of the dying patient, somebody, for example, who has terminal cancer, to help them uh, deal with this terrible experience in a better way, help them to accept what's happening. Uh, it's been used in uh, augmenting creativity, and it's important to stress that this is in already creative people rather than in making non-creative people creative. Will tomorrow's world be a psychedelic one? In the Haight-Ashbury, they dream such dreams. Within the psychedelic generation, it's mostly, I think, a white middle class movement right now. Um, a, there's not many black people in it, but they're coming in it. And the people within the white, within the white people within this psychedelic generation refer to people such as like John Coltrane, uh, Albert Eiler, Archie Shep. These are people that I find that can give me intelligence and wisdom that can teach me. And these are all avant-garde musicians that are playing liberated, joyous music. 
And those are the kind of black people that I find that can help me. America's true spiritual leaders, I think, would be a good way to describe them. Also, uh, the rock and roll people. Uh, I, d I don't think there's a major rock and roll group uh, in the world that's not turned on. Some of it is going to have its consequences upon all of our established institutions, including the church. We've already seen in the church jazz liturgies, and I fully expect to see uh, folk rock liturgies, some of this music, some of this experience, some of this new style of life brought into the church as it exists today. Uh, I'm rather sorry to hear that they say every rock and roll group is turned on. I, I'd be really sorry to know that this was the source of all the grand music that these groups are able to produce. Uh, I'd like to say one more thing about San Francisco. I think San Francisco is the holy city. I think it's going to be the Mecca of the West. And uh, what I'm going to propose in January, although I don't know about the ethical propriety of it, is that uh, Allen Ginsberg run for mayor of San Francisco. Although the idea of a turned-on mayor of a holy city called San Francisco might be called psychedelic humor, it also points up the problem of how to control or channel the use of a powerful new drug in a society in which too many already are too willing to seek solutions to life problems through drugs. A wise doctor once said, I'm very wary of taking any kind of drug myself because I suspect that any drug strong enough to do me good is also strong enough to do me harm. Yet as we move further and further into a drug-oriented culture with thousands of new products being discovered every year, it becomes evident that the entire community must begin to learn more about drugs and their effects on human beings. We felt that it was most important that we put on an educational program so that we could bring to the young people, particularly people in our junior colleges, in our colleges, uh, the terrible story of LSD, the tremendous damage that it can do. Children want to know about these drugs, and if they don't get sufficient information they'll, from their parents or from their teachers, they'll turn elsewhere. I think that uh, the answer to what to do about LSD lies in educating not only children, but in educating parents and teachers about the problems associated with the drug and of uh, the uh, potential scientific usefulness of the drug in controlled experimental situations. KRON-TV asked Governor Ronald Reagan to comment on the problem. Well, I'm terribly frightened by the problem of LSD. Uh, I think there's been a great deal of misinformation uh, by those who seem to see no harm in it. But as a parent and as a citizen, and certainly now in this position, uh, I am greatly concerned. Here is a, a colorless, uh, odorless, tasteless drug, hallucinatory drug, that is uh, easily produced, so therefore difficult to control, and the misinformation from those who should know better is that uh, it isn't harmful, uh, that it sort of opens up the mind, that it's, uh, we, we we're even seeing some of our young people told it's a worthwhile experiment uh, for them to indulge in this, but nearly as we can learn and from the most reputable of medical sources it is a drug in which there is no knowledge about the eventual harmful results we know that uh, uh, one individual can apparently escape with no problem others immediately have a great problem there is a residual effect that this can come back with uh, what might be permanent brain damage months after even just a single use of it and i think it is shocking that anyone uh, of any authority would today try to uh, make young people believe that they can with uh, uh, with no risk to themselves whatsoever play around with this very dangerous drug that I think our only hope lies in a concerted effort of education uh, so that young people will be aware that uh, uh, there is nothing smart there is nothing uh, uh, grown up or sophisticated in taking an LSD trip at all, they're just being complete fools. Anyone that would engage in this or indulge in this is just a plain fool. The real danger from LSD, indeed from any drug, is its uncontrolled use by persons ignorant of the wide range of its possible effects. Laws and sermons will not erase this problem. Knowledge 
properly acted upon will help to meet the challenge. Assignment 4 is produced in the community interest each week at this time by the Documentary Department of KRON-TV. Be with us again next week for another Report to the West on Assignment 4.